Hello and welcome to the episode 21 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we're focusing on the events of the 21st of January. Live performances, screaming audiences, a not-so-secret wedding and a plea for help are among the highlights of the day. 1961. Double feature tonight for the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums. First, the band performed at the Latham Hall in Liverpool. Then, the lads had an unadvertised gig at the Aintree Institute, still in Liverpool, their fifth appearance in that venue. Both events were organised by BK Promotions. On the 21st of January 1962, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. In 1963, as pre-announced in yesterday's episode of What A Fab Day, the Beatles travelled to the EMI House in Manchester Square, London, to record their third appearance for Radio Luxembourg's The Friday Spectacular. This was a programme realised and paid by EMI to air their latest record releases. The show was broadcast on the 25th of January, between 10 and 11 pm, featuring Please Please Me and Ask Me Why, with live reactions from the audience and a band interviewed by hosts Mario Young and Show Taylor. It was another resounding success for the Fabs with the audience going crazy when they were announced by Young. On the 21st of January 1966, George Harrison married Patty Boyd at the Epsom Register office in Surrey. The venue for the wedding had been suggested by manager Brian Epstein, on grounds that having the ceremony in a church would have alerted the press and caused that commotion. Apart from Epstein, Paul McCartney attended the event and served as George's best men. John Lennon and Ringo Starr were still on holiday in Trinidad and didn't attend the ceremony. For all the secrecy, the newlywed were welcomed by a host of photographers when they left the register office in a Rolls Royce Princess for a reception at their bungalow in Escher. So much for keeping the whole thing secret! commented Patty in her memoirs. On this day in 1969, Ringo Starr was interviewed by David Wigg for BBC Radio 1's Seen and Heard. The interview was taped during a car ride from Ringo's house in Surrey to London. Edited to 6 minutes 30 seconds, it was broadcast on the 25th of January, between 1 and 2 pm. Ringo was asked about the media speculation on the future of the Beatles, saying that they often argued, like any close group of friends, but that the rumours of an impending breakup were complete fabrication. He also commented on reports of Apple's financial woes, blaming the high taxes that the UK government levied on successful businesses. But he did admit that a number of projects had been put on the back burner and that the four were probably way less rich than the public assumed. David Wigg, who at the time was a pop reporter for the Daily Express, taped a number of solo interviews with the Beatles in 1969, each broadcast by BBC Radio 1's Seen and Heard. In 1976, he compiled the interviews in an LP called The Beatles Tapes. Later in the day, all the four Beatles met in the Apple Corps basement for the tenth day of work on the Get Back project. As we had seen in the 15th episode of What A Fab Day, George Harrison had reunited with the band on condition that any talk of a live performance was to be scrapped and that the rehearsals were moved to the Apple Studios. He had agreed for the rehearsals to be filmed and to make an album with the material coming out of the sessions. Unfortunately, the change of venue didn't operate a miracle. While the mood did improve, 
the band's playing remained erratic and sometimes sloppy. The Beatles performed Dig a Pony, I've Got a Feeling and Don't Let Me Down, plus a new song by Paul called Every Night, eventually issued in his first solo album, George's Window Window, still unreleased, and a couple of John's tunes, both unreleased. All I Want Is You, not connected to the refrain of Dig a Pony, and Madman. Apart from the usual array of old standards, covers, jams and all these, She Came In Through the Bathroom Window was the only other notable song to be tried out and recorded during the session, according to Beatlesbible.com. The website claims that the recording released in the Anthology 3 was actually completed today, and not on the 22nd of January as displayed in the album's liner notes. On the other hand, Mark Lewison maintains that the recording equipment borrowed from EMI was not operational until that day. I guess this is another mystery that I won't be able to solve for you. The presence of the song in the A.B. Road bootleg doesn't prove anything, since those recordings come from the recorders attached to the two cameras used to film the session. Lacking any primary source of information, I will have to suspend my judgement. Perhaps one of the Beatles is listening and wants to comment? That would really be fab. This concludes another episode of What A Fab Day. If you have enjoyed the podcast so far, please tell all of your friends and consider visiting www.simonmas.com support to find ways to support it. On my website, you can also find all of my other music projects and a form to contact me if you want. In the description, instead, you will find a link to the complete list of all the songs recorded during the Get Back project and another to a bibliography of the podcast with lots of Amazon affiliate links for your shopping needs. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.